Let's uh, copy this equation down. Now this equation is a redox reaction. How do we know that? What is a redox reaction? Well, a redox reaction is where something is getting reduced and something is getting oxidized. And those have to go together, right? Because if you're being reduced and gaining electrons, you must be taking them from somebody else who's getting oxidized. Maybe I talked about that a little in the video series that you yeah. guys watched. Okay. One way to tell that something's a redox reaction is that some of the species oxidation numbers have to be changing. For example, what's the oxidation number of this species? Yeah, because oxidation number is just a way of measuring charge. Well, it's easy to see this has a charge of 2 plus. Well, it's clearly changed its oxidation number. The other thing whose oxidation number is changing is a little harder to see, but it's the manganese. You would have to, to prove that. But each oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2. That's one of the rules that you guys learned in the first semester, actually, that you might have forgotten. Oxygens have oxidation numbers of negative 2. Why? Because they tend to gain two electrons, right? Um, so overall, these would have a negative 8 charge. So what does the charge on the manganese have to be? Plus 7. That's good, because we know that overall this species is negative 1, if you can see this little dash on the board that I put here. So as I said, the manganese really is changing in oxidation number, even though that wasn't as obvious. So this really is a redox reaction. So the skill we're going to go over is how to balance redox reactions. Now you might say well, I, that you already learned how to balance reactions in the first semester. Uh, but this is more complicated, and the reason is, first of all, notice that this is being done in aqueous solution. And it turns out that oftentimes we need to put water in the equation to make the equation balance, which is not the kind of thing that we did with normal equations. Also, um, notice that this is in acidic solution, which means that we might also have to add protons to make the equation balance, which is not something you learn to do in the first semester. So that's why balancing redox reactions is harder than just balancing ordinary reactions like you learned to do in the first term, because you might have to add water, you might have to add protons. What about if this were being done in a basic solution? What type of species might we have to add? Yeah, that's right, hydroxide. So that's why we need to learn a more complicated method for balancing these equations. Uh, I think you can already start to see that this will, um, we're going to have to add water to balance this, because otherwise how can we balance these oxygens? We can't balance this on its own. All right, so let's go through the method for that. This is really pretty complicated, so you need to um, follow the step-by-step -step method in the book. Uh, so I guess you only have one textbook here, so let's maybe share this. So here's the method in your textbook on pages 924 and 925. We're going to start here with step one. Uh, they didn't lay that out quite as clearly as I might have liked. They didn't put it into a separate table like they should have, but it starts down here. So we'll try to go through and learn uh, what those steps are. Well, and the key thing is we have to follow the steps exactly. We're not going to prove that this method works, but it turns out this method always works. Well, then, what is our first step? To uh, separate, them. Oh, <clears throat> separate them into half reactions. Yeah, separate these into half <clears throat> reactions. Well, what would one of the half reactions be? Manganese O4, and on the other side will be manganese 2 plus. Because that will add water there. That's right, we'll do that in a second, but that's right. This is the basic half reaction. It looks like one of the half reactions here refers to the manganese. Mm -hmm. And what does the, what's the other half reaction? Um, um, iron, iron 2 plus, and uh, iron 3 plus. Good. The convention is that we usually don't write the phases in the half reactions. So I'm not copying, copying down the phases, but we know that these phases still apply. Those are our half reactions. By the way, one thing that it turns out is that when you use this method, you don't have to have assigned the oxidation numbers to use this. So now I'm going to erase all the work that I did to find the, this oxidation number, because that was, that was just for, as a point of interest. We don't need that to solve this. We don't need to know this is plus 7, because it's pretty obvious that one half reaction here is manganese and one is iron, even without doing the half reactions. Um, by the way, though, now you can see, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave those in for one second more. Um, what's happening to this iron? Is it being oxidized or reduced? Or do I even want to get into that? Oxidized? Yeah, it's being oxidized because it's um, going up in oxidation number. Right. 
And what's happening to the manganese? Is it being oxidized or reduced? Reduced. Reduced. Well, that makes sense. We should have one half reaction that's a reduction and one half reaction that's an oxidation. If we don't know that this is a 7 plus, it's not as obvious that this is a reduction. That's okay. It's still obvious that we need these two equations here. Okay. Um, so I'll go back to this. By the way, let, let's just make sure we're clear about this. So this is saying that there is a negative one charge on this whole species. It's not saying that each individual oxygen has a negative one charge, right? Just a negative one charge on the whole species. A positive two charge here, positive three and positive two. Um, so suppose we had three of these. What would their total charge be? Yeah, minus three. Okay. Three times negative one is minus three. So that's the type of operation we might have to do here. Okay. Now, when we're balancing half reactions, we're not allowed to change the subscripts. We're only allowed to change the coefficients. Right. So I can't change this from a four to a three, because that would just be a whole different species. All I can do is change the numbers that are in front, the coefficients that are in front. Uh, one more thing before um, I forget, I just wanted to emphasize not all reactions are redox reactions. Most of the reactions you studied last term are not redox reactions, that's why they're easier to balance. You could prove they weren't redox reactions because if you figured out all the oxidation numbers, none of the oxidation numbers would have changed in some of those reactions, but here we have some that did. Well, let's proceed. According to your textbook, what's our next step? The balance, balance. of atoms in the half reaction. That's right. So this is the most important step here, to balance the half reactions. Now, your textbook, I think, is a little unclear, but what do they tell you to balance first in the half reactions? Does it balance in order? Yes. And what do they say to balance first in order? Atoms, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and then oxygen, oxygen, and then hydrogen. So everything is everything first, and then we do oxygen and hydrogen. So the first thing they said is they want us to balance the non-hydrogens and non-oxygens. Yeah. Balance the non-hydrogens and the non-oxygens. Let's see what that would, uh, uh, how that would apply over here. Um, uh, well, in this particular example, here I have one manganese on the left and one manganese on the right, so they're already balanced. Yeah. So we don't need to balance those. And how about this equation? It's already balanced in the ion. So in this case, the non-oxygens and non-hydrogens were already balanced, but that wouldn't always be the case. All right, so these are already balanced here, but that's what they meant by the, the non-hydrogens and the non-oxygens. They meant things like the manganese and the iron. So that doesn't matter what order you do those in, right? It's just anything besides oxygen and That's right. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter which half reaction you do first. Generally, each half reaction will have one non-hydrogen and non-oxygen, unless it's a pretty hard problem. Okay. Now, according to the textbook, what's the next thing we need to balance? The oxygens. That's right. We're going to balance the oxygens using what? What are we going to use to add more oxygens if we need them? The coefficient? Uh, did they say what we should use? Uh, maybe they didn't specify. <laughs> we should use water. Yeah, this is not, they, didn't, really, they really didn't specify this very well. They said, uh, maybe they expected to get it from the examples. Uh, balance oxygen, maybe I should say we should be following through this example okay. here. Because that gives them more details. Oh, yeah, so balance the oxygen atoms by adding water. Okay. Okay. So you would first balance things other than uh, oxygen and hydrogen, and then you would balance the oxygen. So they, 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 made, they were clearer about how this works when they actually started using an example yeah. in part B. Okay, so let's see how that would work here. Um, so let's try balancing this equation. So do we need to add waters to the left or to the right? To the right. And how many waters do we need? Four. Does that make sense? Do you agree? Yeah. Now let's check. Here we have four oxygens, and here we have four oxygens. So that's this step. Balance oxygens using water. How about this equation? That's fine. That's fine because there were no oxygens, so we don't need to add any water. Remember I said this is one of the reasons why these are harder than ordinary equations to balance because you have to add water. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, let's keep going through the steps then. What do they say is the next thing we should balance? Hydrogens. Balance hydrogens. And what do they say we should use? Electrons. And we'll, we'll look at the... Uh, H plus ions? Yeah, using H plus. Remember, another name for H plus would be protons. So now we're going to balance hydrogens using protons. Now, the reason why that applies here is because we're in acidic solution. Mm -hmm. 
How did we know that we were acidic? I didn't emphasize that, but I wrote that above this arrow here. I wrote above the arrow we're an acidic solution. Um, so we can use uh, H plus at this point. Okay, uh, and we're supposed to balance the hydrogens. So let's try this equation here. Um, which side should we add the hydrogens to, the left or the right? The left. And how many hydrogens do we need? Uh, eight. Four times two is eight. Very important when you do that to include the charge. So maybe I shouldn't call these hydrogens, I should call them protons or hydrogen cations, because they're not neutral hydrogens. So this is the next step, balance hydrogens using protons, H plus. What about this equation? No. It doesn't have any hydrogens, so this, this equation isn't giving us too much trouble, is it? Okay. 